CHP Z. Okay, so we start off by adding a cylinder, deleting the tops and the bottom, and with loop cuts and extrusions, start morphing this cylinder into the bottom part of a lamp. This is where all the oil or fuel is kept. And if you have more curved surfaces, just add some loop cuts to make them more curved. And before we add the subdivision surface modifier, add some more loop cuts to the corners that you wish to keep more pointy. Now add the subdivision surface modifier and shade it smooth. And if you're happy with that, it's time to make the glass that surrounds the flame. So to do that, add a UV sphere, go into edit mode and select the loop cut in the center and use proportional editing to squeeze it inwards a little bit. And now it's time to make the top part of the lamp. And you guessed it, we start off with a cylinder again. Start off by curving the mesh over the top of the lamp and extrude the cylinder upwards and outwards a few times until you get a nice little flume shape on top. Add the loop cuts to the corners again, then add the subdivision surface modifier and shade smooth. Now it's time to make the chimney and the roof of the lamp. Once again, use a cylinder, extrude the cylinder upwards a little bit. This is where we're gonna put the chimney holes, then add the roof on top and cut out four equal chimney holes around the cylinder and squeeze the vertices close together on the edges of the holes to give it a more circular shape. Add a solidify modifier, then add the loop cuts to the edges of the holes again to make sure they keep their shape. And once again, add a subdivision surface modifier. Shade smooth and add the chimney on top of the flume. And now it's time to make the handles. To do this, add a bezier curve, extrude it in edit mode and attach it to the top and the bottom of the lamp. And with the curve selected, select the bezier curve handle on the side panel and under bevel, increase the depth until you get the size you want. Under the objects tab, choose convert to mesh. Then give the handle some width and extrude the faces out on either side of the handle to give it a little lip where it attaches to the lamp. And when you've added your modifiers and smoothed it out again, duplicate the handle and add it to the other side of the lamp. Now it seems that every lamp have these weird little metally bits that go around it and I don't really know what they're for. But to make them, use a torus and make it so it fits around the bottom of the glass. Use a bezier curve again to make the little bits of metal that come from the side that attach the handle and duplicate the torus to make the other two bits of metal that curve around the lamp glass. Stretch them and squeeze them so they don't touch each other. When you're happy with that, hide the glass Add another cylinder and make the little bit of metal which the gas comes out of where the flame sits. You can do this the same way as you've done the other stuff. Just make sure that it's tall enough so you can see it through the glass. You can always stretch it out more when we come to do the flame. Now we make the little dial bit that dial up to increase the size of the flame. Once again, use a cylinder, curve the bottom of the cylinder so it fits the curve of the lamp where it's going to sit. Make a little lip again and extrude the faces out. Give it a nice shape and then add the modifiers and smooth it again. Then use another cylinder to make the dial that goes on top. You could just make this a circle, but I wanted to make like a little dialy bit. So I just made a little shape on the surface of the cylinder and extruded it outwards. And when you're happy with that, do the loop cut, smooth and modify thing again. And as the origin point is in the center, if you click on local, you can rotate the dial to look like it's turning on and off. Now the last thing we've got to do is make the handle at the top. So make a couple of toruses for where the handle locks into, put them on either side of the roof, then get another torus and stretch it so it fits into the two handles. Then delete the bottom of the torus where it touches them. Now choose the loop at the end of the torus and extrude it out and twist it until it creates a little loop locking it into the other torus. And to save yourself doing the same on the other side, delete the other half of the torus at the center and use the mirror modifier and join it together, create the rest of the handle. Now with the handle selected, go into edit mode, select the vertice where you want it to pivot, then go to mesh, snap, and choose cursor to selected. Then in object mode, select object and set origin to 3D cursor. Then you can also animate the handle. Now select the meshes you've made one at a time and control A to apply the scale to avoid any stretched textures. With the bottom of the lamp selected, use node wrangler to add a PBR texture. You will see that the texture does not fit on the surface quite right. So in UV editing, mark the seams at the top and the bottom where you don't see them. Unwrap it and the texture should fit on there quite nicely. Then add a mix node in between the color and the color texture. Make the second slot black, put the factor up to just under full and change the mix mode to multiply. On the normal node, increase the strength to get more bump. And when you're happy with the texture, add it to the rest of the pieces that are gonna be the same color. Then add the texture to the roof but I want the chimney part to be a slightly different metal. So select all the faces you want to be a different color. And in the materials tab, click the plus, 
New Material, and then click Assign. Then you can go into Shading tab and click Slot 2 and give that area its own PBR texture. Then change the scale of the texture until you're happy with what you've got. Now all we need to do is repeat the texture process with the dial and the other little pieces of metal on the lamp. And when you're happy with all the materials you've added to the lamp, it's time to add the glass shader to the central sphere. So in shading mode, add a new texture, but delete the principal BSDF and replace it with a glass BSDF. I like to make the glass color a little bit orangey. And before we forget, add a texture to the little bit inside of the glass. And now it's time to make the flame. So to start off, we need to add a UV sphere, use proportional editing to change it into a flame shape. Then in the render tab, change the feature set to experimental, then add a subdivision surface modifier to the mesh and click adaptive subdivisions. Apply the scale and then go into the shading tab. So add a new texture, then add a displacement node and hook it up to the output. Then add a noise texture then add a mapping node and a texture coordinate to it and change the texture coordinate to object. Hook up the noise to the displacement, then to get the displacement to work, go on to the Materials tab, and under Settings, choose Displacement and Bump. Now we have Displacement, let's smooth out the flame. Take the scale down on the noise texture, and increase the height on the displacement until you're happy with the shape you've got. Then on Mapping under Location, move the Z axis backwards to see how the flame is going to animate. If you're happy with that, then change the colour of the principal BSDF to a dark orange, adjust the roughness all the way to the right, change the emission color to a dark orange. Then we add a mix shader to the alpha channel. This will give the flame some depth, making the outside more opaque than the inside. So change the second color of the mix node to black, then add a layer weight node. Attach the facing of the layer weight node to the factor of the mix shader. Then as we increase the blend on the layer weight node, you can see the outside of the flame becoming more opaque. Change the blend to about 0.97, and increase the emission strength on the BSDF until you're happy with what the flame looks like. So here I play around with the color of the mix shader a little bit more, took down the roughness of the noise texture a little bit, and when I was happy, I went back to the mapping node and tested out the animation with the Z axis again. Right, and if everything's okay, it's time to move on to the next bit. So we can take the flame and shrink it down to the size we want it, and put it inside the lamp just on where the gas is supposed to come out. Take your time to get it in the right place because it's gonna move about a little bit. And when that's done, you can animate the flame by pressing I on the Z axis of the shading tab in the two different locations of the timeline. Add some glare in the compositor and your animation is done. And that, my friends, is CGPZ.